Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Hydrogen Delta Hawk variant disclosed. Hybrid crop duster takes to the skies. Up next, Blue Condor makes hydrogen-powered flight a reality. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited. I'm your host, Holland Lee. Let's get into today's stories. Hydrogen Delta Hawk variant disclosed. Delta Hawk engines dropped a surprise on us this week by disclosing their simulation analysis of a new hydrogen-fueled variant of its engine family for multiple markets. These tests apparently demonstrate Delta Hawk's engine architecture will adapt to hydrogen fuel and allow for the development for a variety of markets in addition to aviation. The use of internal combustion engine technology with hydrogen fuel replaces more expensive, highly infrastructure-reliant fuel cell systems. A hydrogen-fueled internal combustion engine also has higher tolerance for hydrogen impurities compared to fuel cells and, importantly, allows leveraging of the existing depth of ICE manufacturing knowledge and extensive service networks. The Delta Hawk engine design claims numerous other advantages, such as reduced development costs and time to market, as well as higher durability and cost effectiveness due to its more mature technology. In addition, Delta Hawk's engine design also boasts a significantly reduced power degradation curve over time compared to current fuel cell technology, allowing for better fuel economy than fuel cells after the initial period. Combined, these attributes should enable a more rapid adoption of hydrogen power worldwide, especially with recent global government incentives for hydrogen. Coming up after the break, HCI Cargo Pilots Grant Union Strike Authorization. Skyleader Aircraft offers a lineup of the most powerful, durable, and efficient light sport aircraft in the industry. From trainers to roomy cockpits for long hauls, Skyleader has an aircraft for you. And the best part? They're in your budget. Skyleader's base prices are set low to give you room to customize your aircraft to your needs, desires, and wallet, allowing you to put your money where it matters to you most. Visit FlySkyleader.com today to learn about our aircraft, customization options, and chat with the team. I grew up in an aviation family. My dad flew airplanes and flew air shows, actually, so ever since I was three years old, the only thing I've ever wanted to do was be an air show pilot. It's cliche, but I get to live my dream every single day. I'm currently using the Hartzell Talon, the new aerobatic propeller. It's increased the performance of the airplane. It's made the harmonics balance throughout the airplane so much better. By far the best aerobatic propeller that I've ever flown behind. Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some shorter stories. ATI Cargo Pilots Grant Union Strike Authorization Air Transport International pilots have authorized union leaders to call a strike now that the action is legally allowed in the negotiation process. ATI's 540-strong pilot base turned out in droves, with 99.7% voting in favor of a strike authorization, according to ALPA. Management has been in the midst of negotiating a new contract for three and a half years, and the talks don't appear to fill the line pilots with much optimism. ALPA said that ATI has bled more than 33% of its pilot body over this year alone, and 25% last year. AeroGuard to double Piper Fleet Piper has nailed a large deal with AeroGuard flight training for 90 brand new Archer TX aircraft, an order that will double their fleet to more than 200 of the brand's planes. AeroGuard Flight Training Center boasts four campus locations, with three in the USA and one in Saudi Arabia. Between each campus, AeroGuard trains more than 2,000 students each year. The company's partnerships with a range of international carriers has seen their alumni pass through the flight decks of Cathay Pacific, SkyWest, and Korea Aerospace University. TrueBlue Power nabs approval for Piaggio Battery TrueBlue Power is now selling a lithium-ion battery for the Piaggio Aerospace P180 Avanti Evo, providing reliable, lightweight power and engine start for the turboprop twin. 
The TB40 provides 40 amp hours in a lighter, smaller package than traditional lead-acid batteries, adding a stitch of useful load and lasting far longer in service. The TB40 offers real-time state of charge and battery health information on demand, courtesy of TrueBlue's built-in battery management system. The fifth-generation battery requires no capacity checks and reportedly lasts eight years. ASA publishes Remote Pilot Ground School ASA has announced a new online ground school course for use in those seeking a remote pilot certificate. The course is aimed beyond hobbyist personal operations, providing the knowledge needed to make a living with a remotely piloted aircraft. Those in it for pay need a remote pilot certificate with a small unmanned aircraft systems rating. As always, that demands they pass the required FAA knowledge exam. That's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. Hybrid Crop Duster Takes to the Skies Wright Electric and Axter Aerospace capped off a successful flight test using their prototype hybrid electric agricultural aircraft, proving the viability of a 1.2 megawatt crop duster. The companies have been hard at work trying to come up with a workable, sustainable alternative to the expensive crop of new production ag planes. The niche aircraft market suffers from small production volumes and costly turboprop engines, which makes their purchase hard for smaller farmers and landowners. Like nearly every other general aviation niche, buyers would love to have a more affordable alternative that eschews costly fuel bills, and the right electric system may one day prove to be the perfect ticket. The hybrid aircraft tested sports 800 kilowatts of shaft horsepower, or about 1,073 ponies in the old measure. Wright hopes that the aircraft will be a solid proof of concept for the brand's electric motor tech. Their electric propulsion unit can be built with outputs up to 2 megawatts, with testing equipment showing 1.2 megawatts peak output with modern production pieces. That EPU has proven to be quite capable in its own right, falling back to 1.1 megawatts of continuous output. Coming up after these messages, up next, Blue Condor makes hydrogen-powered flight a reality. Hello, pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. Welcome back. Up next, Blue Condor makes hydrogen-powered flight a reality. The Blue Condor team has finally begun flight testing using its experimental hydrogen fuel engine, taking their powered glider up to 30,000 feet for the first time ever. The effort dovetails into a plethora of projects, programs, and initiatives, both in their partner Airbus's portfolio, but EU governments too. The Zero-E project has a vested interest in studying the resulting hydrogen contrails left behind Blue Condor, while Aero Design Works eagerly awaits flight test data for their one-off custom hydrogen engine. The aircraft is operated by the Perlin Project, a group who have built a name for themselves in the hyper-specific niche of high-altitude zero-emission aviation. While the flight test hasn't gotten quite so high yet, the team intends to take Blue Condor right up to 30,000 feet in short order. Blue Condor will begin studying the hydrogen contrail stateside, flying out of Nevada during the winter. That should allow improved condensation and vapor coherence at altitude, making collection and sniffing just a bit easier than it would be in the warm and blustery summer. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne, and don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.